Hey everybody, this is The Wigan Family. And we are really excited to be here. This is what number? Third Three. Number this, six. Third Wingcast. This is our third Wingcast. And once again, we were trying to think what to call this. We thought, well, we do a podcast, we can do whatever. We said, hey, we're the Wing of the Family, let's do a Wingcast. Wing so uh, we're really, really excited today to, to come to you. And uh, where are we at right now? We are in Egypt. We are in Egypt. Is this yes. exciting or cool oh, or what? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to, you know, last week we were in where we were at last week. In Rome. And we love doing the Facebook Live. The at the yeah. Yeah. And we were hoping to have the pyramids in the background while we were doing the live today so that we can show you the pyramids actually are out here, but unfortunately we, we don't show well in the light. So let us give you a real quick snapshot of what we're looking at from the place where we're staying. So we're really excited, and you probably can't see it, but there's a camel up on that hill as well. But we can see three pyramids from here. And we are going out there on Monday for a big nine, 10 hour tour that we're really excited about. But that's our backdrop. We were hoping to have that backdrop during our whole live today. Uh, but unfortunately with the sun behind us, we kind of look like we're in the witness protection program. But we did want to kind of show you just a snapshot of what we get to see every day from where we're staying. So. Having said that, let's get, sit back up here. So you guys don't get the view, but we get the view. So, <laughs> so we get to see the view, so we'll, we'll tell you about it. So uh, real quick, we want to uh, you know, start this off each week, too, doing a kind of a, a weekly recap. And it's been a little bit of a crazy week for us, yeah, right? Because we, yeah. so we, we left, uh, where did we leave? We left. Forte Ventura. Forte Ventura. Forte Ventura. Do you, you recommend them going to Forte Ventura? Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Go. Sure. Ventura. Was that a great place or what? Amazing. And then we had a, a quick stop in... Rome. No, Rome. on the way to Rome. Rome. Where did we... Oh, we went to Switzerland. A little it's chilly there. It was oh, it's cold. A little bit chilly getting off the plane. Yeah. And, uh, and then we ended up in... Rome. In Rome. And was that super cool? That was really cool seeing Colosseum. So uh, we can't recommend uh, Fort Adventure in the Canary Islands enough. That was spectacular. A hidden little gem of an island. So much to do there. So affordable as well for a family as well. So if you uh, ever have the opportunity, a lot of times people just think about going to Barcelona or to Madrid or to Europe. And I, I, I highly, we all highly recommend uh, checking out Fort Adventure if you get the chance. Um, but yeah, so it's been a little bit of a transition week, and now we're here in Egypt. And how long were we in Egypt for? Uh, a month. So we are here for an extended period. So we're here for about 30 days, which is uh, in Egypt, you can only, on a U.S. passport, can only go for 30 days. 30 days. So we're kind of yeah. maxing our visitors' visa. Yeah. yeah. So we're, and you know, when tourist we came, visa. or tourist visa. So we're here for 30 days. That's all we can legally stay here for. So we're going to max it out and do that. Yeah, so so that's been kind of our, our recap, you know, for, for the week. So we started at Fort Ventura. Popped into Switzerland, went over to Rome for four or five days, which normally we stay a lot longer, right? Yeah. yeah. And now we are here in Egypt, and we just couldn't be more excited. This is uh, pretty cool stuff. Yeah. One of the so, reasons we were only in Rome for less than a week is because our thirty yeah. days had, or our uh, ninety days had run out. So or a Schengen could, visa. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. our visa ran out there, so we couldn't stay longer. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of people just did. You want to say something? Yep. Oh, a lot of people don't uh, know what that is. So. Just to let you know, if you're traveling to Europe and you want to go for an extended period, they have what they call a Schengen visa, which applies to any European country. And so when you travel to Europe, as soon as you set foot in any European country, you have a 180 day clock that starts. And within that 180 days, you can only stay a total of 90 days in, in total of all the European countries. And so, uh, U.S. passport holders. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's why when we were uh, we popped into Rome, we only had five days left on our Schengen visa, and, and then we had to be out because our 90 days were up. We're getting booted out. We're getting booted out. And it's not like Thailand where you can just go across the border and reset. Your 180-day click starts when you set foot in there, and you can't reset it. It is it is what it is. You get 90 days. You can come and go as many times in that 180, 180 days as you want, but you can only stay a total of 90. And like Carrie said, we were – out of days in Europe, so we had to we had to leave. Yep. So we can't actually even go back to Europe for another ninety days. Right. So, but anyhow, that's kind of been our weekly recap. It's been a lot of fun. I know that actually oh, you guys enjoy traveling, don't you? Yeah, we love traveling. So what's what's what do you look forward to when we get a watching movies on the plane? I love long plane rides. We had the uh, red eye, and so we arrived in Egypt at four a.m. So what do yep. you like? 
what happens in airports sometimes if we're our flying. flights get delayed. He likes it when our flights get delayed. I just like being in airports. Yeah. Cody loves airports. Sammy loves long flights for the movies. Cody loves the snacks. I don't like sleeping in airports. The yes. snacks never come to They took taken it enjoying the journey, not the destination, to a whole different level. Yes. They love the airports and the flying park. Yeah. Go so figure. that's kind of our, our, our weekly recap. One thing I'm going to share that we're trying to do each week, too, is give kind of a tech tip. And, you know, in our week, Wingcast 1, uh, the first thing we shared that was critically important because one of our questions was, uh, you know, what is something you couldn't travel without? And for us, it was the, uh, the power strip. Yeah. And because do we plug a lot of things in there between a iPads whole and iPads? And then last yeah. week we shared another thing that we could not live without, and it's this Mophie. And this is a little battery pack, and it's got three USB ports in it. And we could get about six, you know, iPad charges, six uh, of our uh, uh, iPhone charges on there as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, we love that as well. So the, whoop, let me make sure I. Got that back up there. So the tech tip I want to show today is this thing. And you might be saying, well, what is that? And this is what we call, it's called GlocalMe, C or G-L-O-C-A-L-M-E. And this is a lifesaver. Yeah. It's saved us many times, hasn't it? Yeah. Now, Wi-Fi. Now what Wi-Fi. this is, is basically it's a global pocket Wi-Fi. Uh, there's some other ones out there. This one is surfaced really, really well. And it's a one-time fee to buy this. We bought the, the, the gold standard one. It was like $120 or something. And then what you do is you, you preload data onto uh, your system. And then in any country you're at, you can turn this on. It will access the Wi-Fi, and you just pay local rates. And there have been times where we've either been on the road or traveling or the hotel didn't have great internet, and we've had to rely on this. So it's kind of our tech tip for today is this thing is a lifesaver. Highly recommended if you're going to travel for an extended period because uh, we don't want to be without internet, do we? No, yes, we can't. Yeah, we, we can't. We have so that is our tech tip for today. So we want to talk, you know, turn to our Q&A session. And, and once again, Carrie, you know, we, you know, once again, first of all, we want to thank everybody for the questions they sent in this week. Yeah. So we got a lot of questions this week and we're going to share those. Uh, do you have something to say? Maybe? I was just going to say, even during this podcast or this uh, wing podcast, Wingcast that we're doing, feel free to ask any questions yep. during the live. So yep. call so, them in and we'll get to them for sure. Absolutely. So if you get any questions, make sure we can see. Uh, and if you have a specific one for somebody, you can say either Samantha, Cody, Roy, or myself. Karen. There we go. So we're just checking here. Um, so a couple, we, we did get a number of questions. So once again, you know, if you have any questions, put them in the comments, sit down below. If we don't get to them today, we'll make sure that we follow up and we get to them either uh, in the comments or on next week's Wingcast uh, as well. So, but we did get a number of questions this week uh, that we wanted to address. And then we want to take care of those first and then we'll get to any questions you have as well. So we, we kind of touched on this one last week a little bit. But one of the questions we get asked a lot is, why do you stay so long you know, in each country? And there's a reason for that. And well, a couple of reasons. One, it's uh, from an affordability standpoint, you know, it's, you're not traveling as often, you know, so you're not, you're not buying as travel tickets as often, you're not you're doing those types of things. But the most important thing, because there are other families that travel and they just want to hit as many countries as they can in the shortest period as they can. And that's great. There's no right or wrong. It's kind of whatever any you know family fits for them. For us personally, though, we love getting engaged in the culture and we love getting engaged with people and making new friends. And we feel that if we're only going to go into a country for four or five days or a week, it doesn't give us the opportunity to really connect with people and really connect with the culture. And that's really one of the main reasons that we like to stay many times as long as we can, as long as the visa will allow us. So what, what is, you know, when we're staying in a country for a long time, what does that allow you kids to do? Like It allows us to connect and make friends and get mm-hmm. to know them. Yeah. And then what about in Fort Ventura? We got to be a part of the safe school and yeah. do that. That was really fun. So, yeah. you know, we get to, to engage with people. When we were in Panama, we, we, we found out an incredible church that yeah. you guys got to have a lot of fun. And uh, have you guys made a lot of friends along the way? Yeah, a lot, a lot of friends. Lifelong friends. So, so once again, for that question, great question. But the reason we stay, we try to max out each uh, visa or, or length of stay that we can, 
it's really to connect with people. And have we made a lot of friends around? A lot of friends. Uh, I mean, we have made some, uh, there's not a country we've been to that we haven't made lifelong connections. Absolutely. Uh, and people that are very dear, near and dear to our heart now. Yes. And, and, you know, those of you out there know who we're talking about, so we don't want to we'll, we'll, we'll run out. But uh, So that's why we stay in the, the countries as long as we possibly can. That's um, a great question. So another question that came in is, let me scroll over to it, and this will be a great one for Sammy. Uh, what kind of souvenirs do we collect while we're traveling? So uh, Sammy, do you want to start? Yeah, well, as soon as we left the U.S., I made, a, or my mom helped me make this charm bracelet. And everywhere that we go, I get a charm from that place. From that country. From that country. So, so that's yeah. one of the first things we do is go out shopping and we walk around and we find a charm for her to add to the charm bracelet. So and, just, and luckily here, they have a really cool uh, uh, jewelry shop in the, in the right, hotel here, too. Huh? Yeah. That, that's got some really and cool then charms. I decided to copy her. Right after I saw her charm bracelet, I was thinking, okay, I need to do something. So I've been collecting um, the change from each country. So I've got this Panama, it's a Balboa, and then I've just, um, every single, I don't know if you can see it very well, but every single country I go to, I grab a the smallest coin they have, whatever the value it is, and I just add it to my charm bracelet. So that way we don't have anything bulky, a lot of yeah. people collect, you know, um, kitchen towels yeah. and things. Well, yeah. we don't have room for anything like that. So we just get little trinkets like this and it seems to be working. So and and I also collect um, hotel key cards where you put it, the auto one where you put it in and it opens the door. I collect those also for arcades and stuff around yep. the world. I just like doing that too. We, we don't have a lot of room in our baggage to collect a lot of things. And yeah, the refrigerator. Cody, what do you and I collect? You know, mostly we, you and I collect memories and photos, exactly. right? Yeah. So. Uh, we don't collect a whole lot of uh, things that we could take with us, and, yeah. and you know, if there, there are some things, occasionally we could ship those back, yeah. you know, to uh, some friends and family back in the states to hold if we wanted to. So yeah. that's you know, kind of a snapshot. We don't collect a lot, no. but key cards, yeah. chains, your coins that you do, and and that's really about it. Yeah. But a lot of memories, a lot of photos. So. Yeah. All right, Cody, this is a great question for you. Is the food? This is one we just got this week. Is the food good in Egypt? And and Cody, what's the first thing you do whenever we go to a country or whenever we are going to a hotel, because we don't always stay in hotels, but what's the number one thing you do whenever we go to a hotel? My number one goal is to make friends with the executive chef or any chef, because I know that's a really good connection to have, especially if you're staying in an area for a long place of time, or staying in a place for a long period of time. And it served you well. It served us, oh yeah. It served, served you well. very well. You get very treated well. very well down yeah. so it's, uh, my job to connect with the GM and your job to connect with the yeah. executive chef, right? Yeah, he Cody is an eater. You wouldn't guess it, but he's every hour is like, like all the time with lunch. Yeah, so he always dinner, makes friends with the chef. Can I like, have an apple? Yeah, so he's always gets special treatment with the chefs yeah. for sure. And then is the food good? So I mean, we only we've only just got here, so we'll get back yeah. to you on that a little yeah. bit. But so far, has the, the food been good here in Egypt? It's been really good. They have falafels. And the pitas and the sauce, yeah, hummus, hummus, and the pita bread. So yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. Really good. And then Cody, what's one thing you always surprise the chefs with when you're always asking for spicy and peppers and what do they? Oh give you yeah, like? just this. Everyone, yeah, a lot of people are surprised because I love spicy food. Yeah, spicier the better. Peppers and stuff, uh, and they're so always nice. shocked, like when you ask for peppers and it's all lit and stuff. So uh, I think Cody has lost his taste buds for the most part because he likes things very, very spicy. He bit into a pepper one time wherever we were, and he goes, I think my ears are actually ringing, Mom. I go, okay, that's going to be pretty spicy. And then for you, I'm not going to even try it, but yeah. God. So another question that we got, because we've been, now we've been traveling and we've been on the road for almost two years. We've been traveling full time for two years, almost, yeah. Uh, yeah. coming up in up. November. And one of the questions, Mom, maybe you can address this one, is... You know, do we ever get a break from these two? These two. Or do they ever get a break from us? Exactly. Yeah. That's how it is. That's yeah. How it is. Um, yeah, we do. We get date nights every now and then, not very often. But one perfect example is when we were in Panama, the kids had youth group every Wednesday night. So Ro and I snuck away and we almost went to the same Italian restaurant. But we'd sit there and reconnect and enjoy our time alone. And then plus the kids go to bed before we do. So we get a little bit of time. And then if we're in a... Um, well, when we were in Madrid, we had two separate rooms, and then um, if we have an Airbnb, we've got our own yeah. space, and so yeah, we do. We get a lot of alone time. So, so not, or I, sh I shouldn't say a lot, but we get enough. Yeah, so we, we do get date nights, we do get a break, and, and 
and uh, we've gone for a couple walks, you know, depending on where we are. Like Fort Beach, where it was extremely safe, so we were able to leave the kids in the Airbnb and we walked around, went down to beach for a little while. And, and yeah. do you kids enjoy when you get a break from uh, mom and dad every now and then? Every, every, uh, yeah. every now and then. You're like, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they need a break from us as well. I'm so, sure. so to answer your question, we do. We we do occasionally get date nights, and we enjoy those, and and uh, we think that's important. Yeah. Uh, as well, so and, and also gives the kids a chance to, to be a little bit independent uh, as well. Also, so, all right. Uh, here's a good question that we had this week as well. Uh, question is: uh, Do you do any, anything to prepare before going into a new country? And so, you know, I'm always looking for: Is it going to be safe? Obviously, I'm you know looking at how long we can stay on a visa. You know, looking for other things. But you know, what are the same things that you do as kids? that uh, when we're getting ready to go into a country? Well, we always like do reports and- Look up where we're gonna go. Yeah, so you kind of so study on the country. Yeah, have an idea of what and, it's gonna yeah. be like. Right. Like here, we say, well, how's uh, like the food? What kind of food is there? What uh, what are some of its wonders? Like- so we're gonna, gonna, gonna go- world. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so- It's you know, right next to. Yeah. And Matt, we were doing a big tour on Monday, and so one of the, the, the kids things the kids had to do was research on all the areas that we're going to be visiting. So yeah. you guys have a, a good idea of uh, kind of what it is and the history. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, it's incredible to be looking at it 4,600 years plus or minus of history. And uh, incredible. so it's, it's great for the kids to get to see this firsthand, experience firsthand. And Absolutely. And one of the things we always, because we do homeschool the kids and, you know, this is part of their field trip, but it's also part of their education as well. They are, I love it because if the tour guide says, oh, do you have any questions? The kids are always the first one to say, oh yeah, I have a question about this. And it's usually a really good question that most people wouldn't even think to ask, but it's because they've done their homework and they've researched the area that we're going to or a little bit about the subject. Yep. So it's always fun to have them ask questions and as soon as a guide or an adult hears the kids asking questions like that, they're all too eager yeah. to give them a little bit more information. And they usually make it really fun for the kids too. So yeah, so, so everywhere we go, but the, you know, the, the kids, they have, they have to do a little bit of report that's part of their schooling. They need to learn about the country we're going, the culture, uh, study the places that we're going to visit so they have a good idea as well. And, yeah. and uh, also, hey, Karen, I just see that you popped on, Karen. It's been a very, very long time. It seems like just yesterday, we were growing up uh, on the same street right next to uh, to you guys. So great to see you on here. And Linda, great to see you on here as well. So uh, very excited to have you with us. So thanks for joining us. And so another question that we got this week was, um, it's really small. Do you avoid going to countries with travel alerts? And so this is something we've kind of learned as we've been traveling that you really have to take with a grain of salt. I mean, we are very careful with where we travel. We don't want to put any of our family in danger. But many times what we will find is either the UK or the US, they'll have travel alerts out in certain areas. Uh, a perfect example would be the Philippines. When we were in the Philippines, we were doing some outreach and some, some work and uh, we were told with the travel alerts, don't go to these particular areas. Yeah. And we ended up going to those areas anyhow. We were talking to the locals and they're always, they're like, what, what, what's, right. what are you talking about? Yeah. And, and it couldn't have been safer. It couldn't have been nicer. The people couldn't have been more amazing. Absolutely. Did we have a great time in Kabakalan? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and not just Kabakalan, but everywhere. Also in Jamaica, there was a travel warning on Jamaica. Same thing in Jamaica. We went ahead and went forward and because talking to some other people and it seemed to be fine. So yeah. we do our own research. I mean, of course we look and it's on, you know, we'd actually even been concerned about here in Egypt, but then you start doing your research yep. and you get on with, you know, but so, finding your own information. So. But, you know, we had a lot of people trying to talk, talk us out of going to Jamaica. I mean, probably the majority of people. And, uh, I mean, gosh, they made it sound like, you know, as soon as you got off the plane, you know, it, it was going to be, you know, you're going to get robbed or Dangerous, something. Yeah. And, and we we can't say enough good things about Jamaica and the people we met in Jamaica. Yeah. And had we not gone there, we have some very dear, close friends we made there, yeah. and uh, we would not have had that opportunity. Yeah. So, uh, so if you get a chance to go to Jamaica, we highly recommend yeah, it. We right. loved it. Yeah. Uh, but there were travel alerts not to go there. Yeah. Uh, same thing like Carrie said here in Egypt. Uh, we had several people reach out to us and say, don't go there. It's not safe. Um, it's, you know, there's other places you can be going and, you know, it's, you, you have to really take things with a grain of salt and, and, 
you know, and so far uh, the people here have been amazing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I, if, if you're thinking about coming to Egypt and you're worried about the travel lords here, we have not seen any issues. You know, not to say that there's not, but we're being very careful. And uh, we are so thankful we did come here. We've already yes. made some very dear yeah. friends here and yeah. uh, on that. So, yeah. so yeah. to answer your question, do we travel to countries where there are travel alerts? It depends on the level of the alert. And then we do a little bit of research and we reach out. We have quite a network of friends now in the travel that, that travel as well. Yeah. Uh, that have either been to places where we've been at. Um, and so, yes, we do. And, and many times we just find that these are kind of blanket alerts and, and they don't really hold any weight. Not to say that we should be paying attention. Absolutely. We definitely um, do. We just do our research as well. So, so hopefully that answers your question on that. So uh, had we not gone to any countries where there were, there, there were travel alerts, we would have missed out on some incredible times and we would have missed out on making some incredible friends. Yes. Yes. So, um, okay. Next question that we got, which was a good one is does our medical insurance cover us out of the country? And so, uh, in answer to that, the question is answer is yes. The, 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 what we have now, we opted out of, uh, Obamacare for a number of reasons. For one was just it got to be too expensive. Um, but what we found was we want this Liberty insurance is who we have and it's much cheaper. It's actually better care and it doesn't cover you. It, I mean, it does cover you out of the country. So with the Obama policies, they. Can you give us a thumbs up or a um, just say yes, we can hear you? Because we just lost connection. So if you I guys can see me now, I think. Yeah, yeah I think we're back. So we just have a, yeah. Yeah, yes. give us a thumbs up if you can see this. Or Understand. Here. So a um, couple more questions here. And, and, and this is actually one of the things is traveling is sometimes the Internet can be a little challenging. And it, it, uh, that has been a little bit the case here in Egypt. But that's one of those things we have to deal with and, and do a work around and what happened. Now, uh, we did have a question this because uh, we had some people who were thinking about coming to Egypt. Was customs and immigration difficult in Egypt? Was it hard to go through it was customs here? So easy. Yeah. Same, yeah. That's how Spain was yeah. too. Yeah. Was super it's easy. All of you up with all really of Europe easy. is really simple and now it yeah. was here too. So, so in regards to Egypt though, go ahead. One thing though, uh, we have to have a whole page. So Roy had mentioned before that we're running out of our passport pages, but Egypt did take an entire page. So they had to do the sticker and then they stamped, so. So, but you know, for we can only speak to our experience. It may not be the same for everybody, but coming, when we landed, we basically walked into the airport, you walk up to a kiosk, you give the, the guy at the little teller $25 at each. Yeah. They, didn't even hardly look at the passport. They put a little sticker in the passport, said, here you go, there's your visa and you're in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then we filled out a little short uh, immigration thing. Right. Uh, so by the time we got off the plane, went through customs and immigration, I think it took us maybe 30 minutes, yeah. you know, at that. So it was very, very simple. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times you can, you can go out and get your visas in advance. Uh, we did a visa on arrival here and it could not have been simpler. So hopefully that yeah. answers your question. Um, so one of the questions we have, because we get a lot of questions about the kids are, what are a few kid friendly things you look for in a hotel? That was one of the questions we had this past week. And, and we don't, you know, we usually stay in Airbnbs and Marriott's. So, but when we're in a Marriott, what do you kids, what's the first things that you guys kind of look for? Pool. Yeah, but the, the, a pool. ballroom. We always go to ballrooms. Yeah. Why? Because if it's empty, then I love to do gymnastics because... Yes. I just love gymnastics. She's our little gymnast, so. That's kind of your exercise area, right? It's kind of like your gymnasium and, 
And do they have a, a big ballroom here where you can do gymnastics practice? Yeah, a couple of them. And sometimes for Cody, they have a. I like uh, sometimes uh, there's a piano that I can practice on. Yep. He loves doing piano. So that's one of the first things you look for in the yeah. hotel. The pool, you know, that's that's mandatory uh, yeah. for the most part. But yeah, for you, it's gymnastics, a big, you know, banquet room where you can go into each day and get your yeah. your uh, your energy out. And yeah. you always look for good Wi-Fi. I think what yeah, I always for, look at. You look for um, a spa. Yeah. <laughs> so, but those those are you know for the kids you know it's it, they're able to get a little exercise in and do some fun things and oh, you know shit. ping pong table always kind of nice if they have one of those um, oh, yeah. on that. Yeah, but uh, fortunately, no piano here. No. So, but you have a portable piano. Yeah. That we, yeah it's nice. Piano. So that was another question we had. Um, a couple more questions. We just have one more question that we wanted to address here, and that is what has been your favorite bucket list item. Um, that you've checked off to uh, date. So we've been traveling once again, almost full time for two years now. And so, Sammy, what would be your I favorite? I checked off uh, surfing. Yeah. Yes. Surfing, yeah. So that was, yeah, whatever, since, ever since we started uh, in the very beginning, back in 2017, uh, one of the kids was, bucket list item was, we want to be able to go surfing. Yeah. yeah. And did you check that off? Yeah. And do you want I to don't think it would happen. But it, it did, and it was, it's so fun. And now you want to continue to keep checking that one off, don't you? You, oh, only, yeah. want, you only want to travel to the countries now where you can surf, surf, right? Yeah, not a lot of surfing here in Egypt. No, it's sand surfing. Yeah. So yeah. I know that was a big bucket list item for you. And Cody, did you have another bucket list item for you? Well, in Rome that I checked off, I've always wanted to go to the Coliseum. That's yeah. definitely a disappoint, right? Yeah. Oh, no. It was a lot bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, that was fascinating. And it's, yeah. it's kind of a trip to be at the Coliseum just a few days ago, now in front of the pyramids Yeah, yeah. right yeah. now uh, for that. So, and, and then, then Carrie, for your... The pyramids, I've always wanted to see them. So that was definitely, this is one of mine. So I'm anxious on Monday, we're going on a tour here in Giza and getting to see the Sphinx and we'll yeah. be walking into the tombs and find really explore. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, and for me, you know, it's, it, it's kind of a, almost have to qualify the question because... Uh, for me, the bucket list items have been so far, and I know for Carrie as well, really the amazing people we have met. Yes. So, and that's different in different countries, you know. So if we're just talking about places we've seen or experienced, yeah. Why well, there've been so many, but I, I tell you, I, didn't, I thought it was going to be tough to, to to top the Colosseum. Yeah. But I think the pyramids are going to do it, and and the other places that we're going to go into here in Egypt, we're going to be going to the Red Sea. We're going to be going maybe to Luxor while we're here. Uh, what was neat is we had to cross the Nile River to get to our hotel here. Yeah, yeah. Was, which was, yeah. Was yeah. Amazing. So we're going to do yeah. an Nile tour, Nile yeah. River tr cruise as well. But so. I do notice wherever we are, it seems to be our favorite place. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. every time we have to leave some, we're literally broken hearted. And then we get to the next place and then it's our new favorite. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's they're it's all, journey. They're all great. They're they are. They're, yeah. they're all yeah. special in their own way. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's, it's like been, picking your favorite kid. You just, can't there's something yeah. special about each yeah. or, or your favorite parent? No, we'll give it an option of that. <laughs> yeah. That's so, awesome. um, but yeah, it, this is going to be a tough one to beat, I think, from a something to see. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, so we've seen some spectacular beaches, and Fort Ventura was incredible, yeah. and there's been something unique about everywhere we've gone. Yeah. But this is a, a pretty cool place here, yes, and, and probably one of the top bucket list items I would imagine for a lot of people, absolutely, uh, in regard to that. So, um one thing I wanted to mention, be real quick, is, uh, and I think we did this last week, but you know, we had kind of a short wing cast last week that we yeah. did live in front of the Coliseum, and but we do have a a, a free Facebook group, the Lifestyle Insiders Facebook group. Would love to have you be part of that. So you know, we get so many questions, and we can only answer so many on the live. Yeah. And uh, so what we decided to do is put this free Facebook group together. And we'd love to have you in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue to share more tips. Uh, we talk a lot about your homeschool stuff. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we talk about travel tips. We talk about lifestyle tips. We talk about how to build a business that supports a lifestyle. Uh, we uh, talk about a whole bunch of things that we just don't have time to do on these lives. Right. And so we'd love to have you in there. The way to join would just go to RoyMeyer.com forward slash lifestyle group. So uh, the link is right there on the screen. So just go there, request access, and we'll let you in there. But we're going to be sharing a lot of additional great information, and we'd love to have you in there as well. Yeah. So, uh, but those are really our top questions for the week that we had. Yeah, we had another big event happen this week too. Cody is now officially oh, a high yeah. school. Oh, 
freshman. Oh, she's a freshman. That's yes. good. And then Samantha will be in her second year of middle school. She'll be starting seventh grade soon, <laughs> which is fun. They're taking, they've got, they're on their break right now. But um, starting real soon, Cody's going to be officially at we, our baby's going to be at high school student in Samuel. Yeah, freshman in high school in seventh grade. So that was a bit emotional this whole week, too. Yeah, okay. that was a big moment. So yeah. you can say that you uh, you went into, when people ask you where you went to, into high school, you can say it was in Egypt. Yeah, started high school in Egypt. Same place. So, yeah. uh, so anyway, that's, that's all we And then make sure that uh, you, you join up uh, in our free uh, Lifestyle Insiders Facebook group. We'll love to have you in there as well. And anything else you guys want to add? Yeah. We have to show the oh, yeah, we pyramids better. one last time. Yeah, yeah. Good, good point. So let's show you this one more time. So, and it is actually, actually at night, it is spectacular. So let's, uh, let's get you a better view over here. So with the sun going down, so that is our view from where we're at right now, where we're staying. And that's what I get to see every day when I work as well. So pretty cool. It was a little bit of trip, and I don't know if you can see up there or not, but on the on the on the right, I don't know if it's your right or left, but there's a camel that hangs out up there all day, which is kind of a trip to, to watch. So it'll feel, feel a, a little bit like Indiana Jones while we're here. So that is our view. And then down below, you can see I'll give you a shot of the, the pool area where they got kind of a cool pool. Uh, where the kids have been hanging out, so that's kind of fun. But anyway, that is where we're at, and we're going to be sharing a lot more. Sam goes, did they legit film Indiana Jones here? Well, I didn't. I didn't no, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you. I thought that well, was cute. Maybe. No, <laughs> I thought maybe. So. All right. Well, listen, we're going to let you go. Thanks for being here, up Les. Uh, everybody have a. A great weekend, and we're looking for, forward to sharing some really fun stuff while we're here in Egypt uh, over the course of the next uh, three weeks. Yeah, we've got three, yeah. a little over three, a little over three weeks to go. So yeah. that is it now from the, the Wicked Family. Family. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye for now.